An Ebola outbreak in West Africa killed more than 11,000 people between 2013 and 2016. It was the world's largest Ebola epidemic. Europe started here and it goes like this. Continues here. Like this. And um, it ends here for the front. But there is another hope behind, behind the compound. Now we're 72 days at the house. See, I mean, two of my brothers there. Where we live in the same place here, now they can't seek. Now the one brother, man, he died. When this year don't can be the people in the pan cry, then say so forget all of them. They don't know what to again. So so picking them, the mummy they all they cry cry, that cry guy they all make they all sick. Now he, six of die. Plus the two don't make eight. They can't quarantine back, they return we, we, we quarantine back. But the only thing, fiscal money, cash for all and for all we buy, meow meow, for all we feel better with Bele. Money not be there, for give you cash. Because we need money, for all we sell, but our people in the go buy some cheap provision. For we, we can't eat Bele full. The other 24 days, I'm going to go 42 days. We sit in one place. It is possible that people that are living in quarantine homes contaminate each other. Why? Because one lack of information, they are not well sensitized on what they need not to do and what they need to do in order for them to stay um, uninfected. And two, because sometimes when somebody is sick, uh, once corpses are collected, the houses of those people are never disinfected. So that is why most people that are living in quarantine homes eventually get infected with the Ebola virus. As the world watched the Ebola outbreak unfold, Doctors Without Borders responded. This film captures the story behind the headlines. Hello, 117 Ebola Responsible Center. If someone is sick and is calling for help, the number is known by everyone, 117. The call center directs the suspected patient to the holding center. If the patient is confirmed uh, Ebola, then he's sent to the Ebola treatment center. The problem is that they stay for weeks and sometimes die in the holding center with risk of contaminating the health workers and the surrounding patients. He arrived here yesterday. We are following him very closely. He's still having a lot of symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, but he's not getting any worse for now, so I'm still optimistic. We had to change the perfusion, but of course it's not dropping fast enough, dripping fast enough, so it's still there. So I still need to go in to make it faster because otherwise it will take all the night. Robi, R O B I. Thank you. Are we ready, guys? We can go? This amount of liquid was supposed to be finished one hour ago, so it's going too slow. You want to change the bed? Okay. Today we, he had the complication because we did some uh, laboratory tests. We found some results that were not going very well. So one of the symptoms of Ebola, of the science, it's a low amount of electrolytes in the blood. And this child has low potassium that can lead very quickly to that. So now we are really following the fluids very carefully because we are replacing potassium. We are making shifts among doctors to go in quite regularly to follow up the condition of the kid and the perfusion to be sure that we are not putting him in extra danger. In an Ebola context, the number of children that you see dying, it's, it's uh, heartbreaking. It's very difficult, very difficult. 
with the new setup that we have in the center, it's, it's the quality of care that we can provide is much better. So we're not physically in the high risk area, but we have this plexiglass corridor. We can be there, we can give some advice to the, our colleagues that are inside and we can really follow up okay. the patients more closely. Can you give him some water? Thank you. We can kind of follow up the patients over time and see if we need to adjust the treatment or if you're doing well. To see a child that is walking like this to go out, it's a very good sign. The group of pregnant women was a neglected group amongst the Ebola patients. The moment of the delivery, the moment of the labor, nobody would touch them. Everybody was too afraid to get infected during that moment, so they would just leave them aside and not do anything. So the idea to have this maternity is to have a place where we can monitor very closely the patients and to decrease the death rates among this group of patients. Yali, hello. How are you fine? How was the night? How did it? Okay, this afternoon we're going to start again to try to have the baby out. Okay, my only fear is the bleeding when you start again. So we have a bag, another bag of blood. In case you bleed too much, we might need to give you more blood. Her baby died while she was at the center. She became negative here, so she's actually one of our first pregnant women to survive Ebola. The problem with Ebola is that the antibodies of the mother don't reach the baby. So even if the mother recovers from Ebola, the baby still remains Ebola positive and all the fluid in where the baby is remains Ebola positive, which makes this a big challenge. We have no clear guidelines. We're facing new situations every day. We have big ethical challenges as well. We may face situations in which the mother recovers from Ebola and the fetus is still alive. And we don't know what to do in these occasions because it's a life that you are supposed to protect. But on the other hand, the moment of the delivery is going to be very dangerous for the people who attend that delivery. So let's see. Yay! Betty? I think overall it looks pretty good. Pretty good or, or negative? No, I don't think all negative. I think there are one or two Diana, still positives. Negative. Edward negative. Watson is negative. She will be so happy, huh? She gets to go home and see her kid. We have some results for you. I hope they are good. Woo! So we have five negatives. That is good. Watch it! Rosie! <laughs> So I see you on the other side, huh? Oh. I got the teddy bear for you. Thanks. It's gonna be nice coming home. It's a lot of feelings and it will be overwhelming, but it will be nice. Soon I can get to give you a hug, huh? Oh. <laughs> Discharges are always, um, it's mixed feelings. You're very happy for them and 
it's always so nice to see someone walk out at the same time, you know, that they have lost family members. They have to go home to a reality that is quite different compared to what it was before. Oh. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 She got better. Yes, she was seven months pregnant. Yes, yeah. and I took care of her when she was here, before you came, huh? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm very happy that you and Rosalind are out, and I'm very sorry for the people that you lost. Yeah. Mm. And you look a bit like her. Mm? You and Adele, you look a little bit like each other. Yeah. yeah. Take care now. Okay. You take care, Oslin. Yeah. Good. But Wu Chen's homecoming is bittersweet. Thankful she survived this deadly disease, but remembering those who died because of it, knowing that her life now will never be the same. <laughs>